All right, everybody, good morning. It is morning here. It's uh, the afternoon, late afternoon, early evening over there. Uh, let's welcome to today's show. He's got a big smile on his face. It's a beautiful day. And he's got a hell of a freaking story and an even bigger hell of a solo album that's getting ready to come out. A couple singles are already out. Let's welcome to the show. You might know this guy from a band called Pretty Maids. I don't know. I don't. But let's introduce him to everybody else. The one and only Mr. Ronnie Atkins. Ronnie, how you doing today, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much, Ronnie. Thank you. Uh, I'm cool. I mean, uh, uh, a long day of interviews, but it's great. You know, it's great that people want to talk to me. <laughs> and, the <laughs> on the, and the sun is shining. And uh, this is actually something new here in Denmark because it's been... Uh, it's been so rainy and gray and cold you know, for a long time. And now, now we smell spring, which is great. It How about lift, that? It lifts the mood and just a little bit, right? It, you know, it, it, it's amazing. Like, um, I'm here in Nashville, and uh, I was just saying last night to my fiance, I said, you know, because I was starting to feel under the weather yesterday, I said, the other day it's like 28 degrees and miserable rainy and all and the last two days it's like 70 degrees it's sunny and beautiful it's like but I'll, I'll, I'll take this for sure that's fantastic i love this i love this time of year always you know and, uh, it's beautiful everything is blooming you know it's great that's great Abs absolutely yeah. so uh, ronnie I'm, I'm gonna be honest uh you know so pretty maids you know you, you guys came out you know mid to late 80s um and uh, for me, naturally, Future World was the, the song I heard when I when I was a kid. And w still, like, when I go back and listen to that song, like, I just get a smile to my face. Because it reminds me of, you know, being that 16, 17-year-old kid, the good times of being a kid, that whole era of music. Mm. But then I think to myself, why didn't I dive into the rest of Pretty Maids over the years? And become a fan. I'm like, I, I don't understand why. And I think it was kind of the same thing with a lot of people here in America. Do you, do you, why was that? Do you have an answer? Well, we 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 had a we had back then. You know, we had a proper release in America on a couple two albums we did in the '80s. We were on on CBS Records back, Sony Music Today, right? And uh, and we it was the it was our heyday. It was the '80s. You know, they played mm -hmm. metal on, on TV, and we were on MTV and on the radio and stuff like that and then you know the grunge came along and you know it was like everything just died you know for like right. uh, traditional heavy metal bands hot rock melodic hot rock bands we were suddenly we were dinosaurs we, we all the people almost spit at us on concerts no no wow. but you know it, it was just a game changer to be honestly I'm, I'm sure a lot of other musicians from my age and a lot of the bands that was uh, out there in, in the 80s you know can uh, recognize that uh, it's just just the way it is you know and then then you know for a period of 10 years or almost 20 years actually not much was going on i mean we were we were still there and we, we did records in all those years right 16 studio albums and but in particular the last 11 years you know since 2010 i think we did not some of the best stuff we ever did in pretty mates so but you, these are different times you know you, you know it's weird like Thinking about it because, and, and I, as I was going through and like reading a lot of stuff about about you and Pretty Maids over the last uh, twenty four hours, getting ready for the interview, and uh, like what you just said with the whole grunge thing, I almost kind of thought like it didn't affect overseas as much the the music because how how many amazing um, hard rock and metal bands have come out from that genre <clears throat> in the last you know. 15, 20 years, and it seemed like they've gotten so much press and accolades and, and fans like all around the world. So I, I was kind of shocked at most because I was like, wow, I didn't really think that grunge hit as bad over there than it did here in the States. Well, it was. It was hugely popular. Actually, I remember myself the first time I heard it on, a, on a, an American radio station. I heard Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I was, I was kind of blown away, too, you know, because it was something new, fresh and stuff like that, you know. But, right. So, I mean, uh, but I like some of the stuff that came out of the grunge thing, you know. Uh, I like the first Pearl Jam albums and stuff like that. And I was in Chains. Uh, but, you know, no, there was not a lot of there wasn't a lot of grunge bands coming out. Uh, 
from here actually but it was right the american bands but the grunge thing was was huge in europe as well and right. then then came the brit pop you know which naturally came from britain <laughs> and then then it you know, there came all these different genres like um, new metal and all that stuff you know so you know all the traditional hard rock heavy metal bands just kind of disappeared for mm -hmm. a time and then then in you know like uh, all this power metal really started rising again in, in germany in, in particularly uh, right i actually lost track for a couple of years you know because i was i'm old-fashioned and i'm old school i i said so what is all this new stuff i hardly i couldn't <laughs> I got to put on my old Black Sabbath records and Thin Lizzy and Led Zeppelin, and whatever you purple. So uh, yeah, but that's the way it is. I mean, you remember in the seventies, you know, when I mean when Led Zeppelin, uh, Black Sabbath, and Purple were the were the huge bands, and then came yeah. Sex Pistols and um, Ramones and all those bands, you know, and, and made a game changer back then. You know, it's basically the same thing that happened, and I think it it, you know, it just happens once in a while. But um, but we always tried to stay. I mean, even though we tried in Pretty Mates to update ourselves a little bit, you know, it always ended up like Pretty Mates. Whatever we tried to do. <laughs> so um, yeah, but we tried. But we 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 kind of stuck to our roots, basically. You know, what we grew up with and what we were influenced by. Absolutely. So now now the you you released a solo album last year. Mm -hmm. uh, your new one uh, is getting ready to come out in a couple of weeks. Make it count. Um, you were diagnosed with cancer, I guess, about two years ago. Yeah, two and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. August uh, two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Was your solo album the already in the works at that point before no, your was, diagnosis? No, it wasn't actually. Uh, you know, the first album, One Shot, was um, was something I did because I had a lot of songs, and and at the time being, I, I you know, then the, my cancer started with lung cancer you know then it then it then I, I was actually kind of cleared if you can never say you've been cleared you can't really right but, but just just a month and a half after i was cleared uh it spread to my bones you know so suddenly it was uh, stage four cancer and i was in totally shock and grief kind of you know, sure too, and i was totally uh they say the stage four cancer, and now you're on life prolonging medicine, you know. And, right. And basically, nice cat. Like that. <laughs> and, you know, basically, the, the diagnosis hasn't changed. You know, I went through a lot of, uh, uh, I went, went through surgery, I went through chemo, I went through a, great, a lot of radiation, and mm -hmm. had immune therapy for almost two years. Right now, I don't get any treatment anymore. And part of the matter is that I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I've just been going through a lot of, uh, um, scans and stuff last week and i'm gonna get a message tomorrow but i feel good i feel great and basically i've been kind of cancer free for two years now but okay. but um, i have a metastase in my in my ribs right and uh, so it's like uh to, to explain it in, in child child's language not not because i don't think you understand but you know it's like uh it's like walking around it's like a volcano that can erupt eventually at, at any time any given time you know? so but i feel good and when i did the one shot album i to get back to your question, I, I basically used it to to get these songs out of my system with the help of my good friend Chris Laney, who produced the album, and who actually kicked my my ass just to go ahead with it. And I had all these ideas. I was writing a lot on piano and guitar at the time being, and um, it was my way. I used this as some kind of therapy to you know to occupy my, myself with something positive and focus on sure. the positive side of life and not just sit in the corner feeling sorry for myself and uh, you know do something you know set some goals for yourself which is what i did and so when one shot came out like a year ago actually more or less precisely a year ago i already had more songs and i kept writing so we basically just continued doing the same thing all over again you know doing a new album uh, kept writing eventually i had 12 songs so that's and we record them accordingly like like when i wrote one we recorded them because i wanted to do the vocals we did demos and i did the vocals and then we did the real instrumentation afterwards the same way as we did the first album because i just wanted to make sure to get my vocals done you know in case something right. should happen. but i'm i'm good today and and i and i i had my ups and downs it's you know it's it's uh 24 7 it's, it's in my subconscious you know and uh, right but the music really saved my life and kind of up, up until now and helped me go go through all this uh what it is there's been i also had some the red lights were flashing sometimes and i went to further examines during those two years but 
heart of the matter is I'm here and I'm good and mm -hmm. I'm very grateful that I'm still around. You know? Also, with a, a lot of support I had from the internet, from fans, uh, you know, on the, on my social medias, uh, it means a lot to me, you know. And uh, and I know that some of my songs has maybe inspired some of the people being in the same situation or knowing somebody in mm -hmm. the same situation. So that's uh, that that's really great to know. You know? Sure. Did you um did you think uh, early on like after you're first diagnosed um like screw this I'm not even going to do this I, I don't be bothered like I'm not it's too much for me to handle No but I mean I when when I, when I first got it you know I knew there was something wrong during the summer uh, of 2019 I had but I, I had back issues for years you know and then suddenly mm -hmm. but I had this kind of non pain you know, strange pain. You know, it's something you know yourself that there's something wrong. My mother mm -hmm. had the same thing and she died of it when I was 22, you know, actually. My wow. Age, 57, right? So uh, I went to the doctor and he said, nah, I, just, I think you just struck a nerve or something. I said, well, I said don't you think we should, uh, you know, um, check it out, you know, and, and they sent me off. Uh, uh, and then, like, uh, <laughs> the same, very same day, I said, yeah, but they found a spot in your lungs, you know, and, but, but they mm -hmm. think, then I had to go through the whole thing. Three I had two biopsies, having a needle stuck into my lungs and fucking hurt, you know. In yeah. The first time, uh, um, yeah, it was just a very bad experience, you know. But but and then finally, but I, w I was convinced. I, I was kind of. I've been smoking, man. I've been smoking for forty years at the time, or thirty-five years. At that time, I actually quit smoking, but I've been a smoker, heavy smoker for, for years, and I also had my share of alcohol. That's not a secret. And those two things combined is deadly you know? mm. but i lived the fucking rock and roll life you know and, and uh, so it's not that i i don't regret my life because i had a great life i had a great run uh, but uh but then and that's also what the, some, some of the songs are uh, all about you know we take everything for granted you know that's what right now it's all about you know and that's what we do when we're good and we're healthy and that's the way it should be we shouldn't walk around thinking about death death you know but but so when i finally was told i was cancer i wasn't i wasn't surprised but then mm. again I, I had some panic panic attacks at, at some sure time. it took took me a long time to you know to kind of cope with it but uh, as i said music helped me do it isn't it even <clears throat> isn't it even hard to talk about now like no because i mean the, you know the main difference like talking about recording the albums again is that uh is that when I did the one shot album, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's maybe a little bit more emotional and, and melancholic and reflecting than this album is, but this album is as well, you know, because it's still in my head, right? But I was in kind of the you know, I was, I, was, I was kind of grief when I did that album uh, during the summer of 2020. When we did this one, I kind of learned how to cope if you can ever learn to cope with it, you know, but you got right. you just, you just got to be realistic and say, okay, it is what it is, you know. I can't change that. I can just hope that uh, science can prolong my life, you know, as much as possible. I do everything I can myself. Well, I don't. I mean, I, I train every day, you know. I still have a glass of wine and a beer and stuff like that. You know, I don't mm -hmm. smoke, of course, uh, but uh, so I hope that uh, with the help of um, um, the higher powers and the good doctors and science, you know, that I'll be allowed some more years in life because I've got a lot more to offer. Really. Absolutely, absolutely. But I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very realistic about the situation, you know. So I can talk to people also. People come and say to me, "But you look good, you know. You I haven't lost. You look better than me." <laughs> oh, you said that? No, no. Yeah, I, I, I actually gained weight, you know, because of uh, having wow. therapy and and that kind of fucked things up in my body in that way, you know, but, but I was never really sick from the chemo and the radiation and, and, and the immune therapy. And that's, I had some, sometimes I was, but, but in basically when I look at a lot of other people with cancer, I've been very fortunate, I've got to say that, I'm very mm -hmm. thankful and fortunate. Yeah. And so I, I basically been feeling good and, and, good. you know, so to speak, as good as I right. can. Right. Right. Now, have you, um, I mean, through this whole process, because on top of that and, and everything else, we've had the whole, you know, COVID and pandemic and everything. Have you been able to, like, perform these songs live? No, not at all. Not at all. Oh, I, wow. I just announced, actually. I never, I never even played these songs in a rehearsal room, you know, because, wow. because they were written here in my home next door here uh, on my uh, little upright piano and my guitars and stuff like that so uh, and then i sent it to stockholm where chris lives he did it, he did the instrumentation and and i 
went and did the vocals and so no no i'm never it's the first time i've done something it's not the first time because i've done an antasia and nordic union before but but uh but uh, normally, normally we pretty much we're always leading up to entering the studio we we, we do some pre rehearsals and stuff like that pre production mm-hmm. but i haven't done that with these songs you know so it's kind of weird but i just, I just started singing like an hour and a half to two hours every day to get my pipes work and you know one thing is being in the studio or singing back home one thing is being on stage you know and now i'm right. gonna go out and do a couple of gigs in may hopefully right. not willing and uh here in scandinavia to begin with just to see how how things are you know because i mean i lost some 20 percent of my lung capacity uh was right. reduced when they did the surgery so i can of course i can feel a little difference in my breathing my voice is still good and shape and stuff like mm-hmm. that but uh one thing is being on stage, another thing is just singing back home, you know, so it's going to be interesting. Of course, we've got to do some rehearsals leading up to it, and uh, I've got a great set of musicians gathered now, which is a puzzle in itself, because they're all involved in all kinds of other bands, uh, so mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of a challenge, but I'm looking forward to do it, for sure. It's going to be amazing. I know it is. I, I, I can't wait to see, uh, you know, I got, I got to learn the lyrics again now. I got to learn. I mean, <laughs> it was just like a day at the office, you know, not a day at the office in that way. But, you know, I knew the lyrics were exactly what pretty made where to do this and do that and stuff like that. That's right. So they were on my spine. But but these, I mean, uh, even though I wrote them myself, I really got to listen to it again, you know, and do some, uh, get it going again. But it's well, good well, to sometimes. That's cool. That's cool. Let, let, let's talk about the lyrics, though, because, you know, like, like you said, um, you know, you uh, writing more now, you know, about the situation and, and how to cope with it and um, more of a therapy for you. Uh, and like you said, too, you, you live kind of that uh, rock and roll lifestyle. So I'm sure you're not writing about the whole sex, drugs, drugs and rock and roll thing anymore. Um, well, the thing is that it's difficult in my situation to write about sex, drugs and rock Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's in mind, you know. Uh, but in fact, I never really did, not that much, actually. Uh, I always used to like, uh, always used to write about topics that kind of concerns um, human beings. I mean, you know, I've always been a news freak and I'm very much into history and, you know, uh, and politics as well. You know, I'm not trying, I don't want to be political, tell people, to, right. you know, what to vote for, but just write about topics, issues that kind of concerns us all, like the climate changes and, mm-hmm. And uh, tyranny, yeah, or whatever you name it, you know, uh, that that's what I always did, you know. I you, I never let you finish your question, actually, did I? <laughs> but I guess it was something like that you'd write about, or you. Yeah, yeah. About. Well, well, do you, do you even even uh, think now, like as you're writing stuff, like you have become, and and naturally it comes with age as well. But going through the situation, almost like you, like you're um, the way you're looking at things and the way you're writing now, you're you're a wiser person. Well, uh, I know a lot of people that would say I'm not. <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, I'm just a 16-year-old kid, man, inside a 57-year-old body. No, true, seriously, of course, you grow and you, as I said, you, I don't necessarily take things for granted. I always had my serious side, but I was also the funny rock and roller, you know. Right. Um, of course, I mean, now when I say from my experience of the last two and a half years and all the things I've been going through, not just, but also for my family and stuff like that, uh, that, yeah. that, that makes you wiser or more experienced or whatever. So, I mean, some of these songs are, are so, uh, actually some of the songs are so personal and reflecting and uh, melancholic, I guess, you know, that sometimes it's even hard for me myself to listen to. There's a song that came out on, a, on, a, on an acoustic EP that came uh, in the fall called Four More Shots, you know, that's a mm-hmm. song called Carry Me Over. And that song was the first song I actually wrote. It was actually meant to be in the first album, but but the lyrics were so much, it was so real, but they were almost too real. And when I listen to the song to this day, I remember exactly when I wrote the lyrics and that's exactly how I felt when I wrote those lyrics, you know? So sometimes it, it can be a little too honest, even for me. Wow. Um, you know what I mean? No, I, believe me. Believe, now I have to go back and listen to that song <laughs> just to, to to get that whole thing. And, and I, that's a ballad kind of. And we, but we, we, everybody said, "What well, is the song? Is too good not to release it." And, and, 
I said, yes, yeah, so now I'm ready to release it. Now I've learned to cope with what this is all about. But I couldn't do it for the first time. Also, sure. Change the ballad, right? And now it's an acoustic ballad. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, well uh, I told you this before we went live on the air. Um, the, the new album is called Make a Count, and uh, you just released the, the video for it, um, I guess, about two weeks ago. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've gone through and I listened to the album. The album itself is is, is amazing. And, and, and like I said early on, like, you know, I was never like a big Pretty Maids fan. And, you know, when I started seeing the press releases last year about um, One Shot and Your Situation, I was, and then I was listening to some of that. I was like, wow, like, you know, I, I've been missing the boat here. And then when this opportunity came up, and I got to hear this album. I, I blown away. I, I mean, really, I, I'm, I'm truly a fan now. And um, the Make It Count album is amazing, but the Make It Count single, uh, I'm just gonna say, holy shit! Like, I've been listening to. I've probably listened to it 20 times in a row, and I can feel the emotions in it through the lyrics. And I'm, I'm about to. T- I, honestly, I'm about to tear up t- talking about it. It just strikes such a, a nerve with me, and I can feel, and that's what I love about music. It doesn't matter if it's hard rock or metal or pop music or disco. I don't care. If I can feel it, then I love it. And Ronnie, wow, do I feel that song. Thank you. But, I mean, you know, it also is a very, it's absolutely one of my favorite songs on the album because it, because it is personal. You know, and, it, and, it, and, 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 and that's great. When, you, when you're telling me this, I'm, I'm really happy because... That's how I feel about music too, you know. And this song is really comes from my heart, you know. It's uh, it, it started out as a as a ballad, simply a ballad, written on sure. piano all the way through, you know. And uh, and I sent it up to Chris, and he came up with this idea. I mean, in the chorus, everything was good, the melodies and the chorus and everything. And he came back to me with this: "Hey, listen, I, I just tried something, you know. Listen to this, and said, why don't we?" go up around this you know <laughs> and he sent it back so you know the, the song totally changed identity midway you know kind of and becomes a rock song kind of almost with a little kind of late 70s disco feel to it you know and this is cool because i'm a huge abba fan you know swedish band abba you know so absolutely that's the way it worked out and it just goes well with the everything just goes well together in that song and it's 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 a one of the most interesting songs I think I ever worked on, actually, to be honest. With you. So I'm very happy, but I was actually a little anxious about uh, how people would react to that song. You know, but, really? Yeah, because you never know. I mean, some people are a little, ah, it's not metal enough or something like that. Right. You know? But the thing is, on my albums, on this album, I mean, there's some heavy stuff on this album too, right? But, but um, these songs, in, in comparison to what I've done for the last 40 mm-hmm. years, as we pretty makes these songs are built simply around not around uh, uh, you know a guitar riff or anything like that you know i don't i like good guitar riffs but mm-hmm. basically built around my melodies whether the melody came first or i got inspired from some chords playing on the piano or the guitar whatever you know but that's the the sole foundation of the album it's, it's got to be good songs you know and as i have sure uh, six thousand times in my life i guess you know if a good song sounds good on on a piano upright little piano or acoustic guitar you know mm-hmm. you've got something and then it's a matter of how you wrap it up you know how you how you produce it wow and and uh, make it count is is one of the those songs i knew it was a great song but it after they had a little treatment from chris you know, it actually got even better you know so that's uh that's cool well done well done did, did you ever um be, before you launched onto this uh, solo career, was it ever in your thoughts to do a solo music? No, well, I've done projects. I, n- I never had the need for it, to be honest. I, I've been asked before to do a solo album, but I never had. I said, no, I'm doing Pretty Mates, and that's enough for me. And besides mm. that, I was doing these Nordic Union thing with uh, Swedish uh, Eric Martinson, and I've been okay. doing. Sorry? Okay. Yeah. And, and then I did uh, Aventasia, which I did like for mm-hmm. the first time. I did this with like only like eight, nine years ago. Otherwise, I would never have done anything else. I did some backing vocals back in the nineties for Black Gar- Blind Guardian and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But but I never I had the offer to do stuff before, but I uh, always asked if I was interested in doing. It. I always said no. 
Wow. Um, as I hadn't had enough in, in what I did. We we did an album and then we toured for a year or two, pretty much, you know, on and off. And then, um, but now it was a new situation. It was, uh, and I've been, I mean, two albums in a, in a year. So it was quite a lot, you know, because the, I mean, in the 70s when I grew up, I was looking forward to there was a new T Rex album coming or something. That was mm-hmm. always an album coming every year, something like that, you know, or Deep Purple or whatever, you know. But um, but also it's been a lockdown, you know. So I, as I said, I use it partly as a therapy, and besides that, I couldn't do much else. So, sure, uh, it was kind of uh, just go for it. <laughs> I'm, and, and I'm a writer, I'm a songwriter, and I still write songs to this day. I mean, the last week I've been writing quite a bit, you know. So I have a lot more, man. I mean, it's not like the well ain't empty. It's not empty. It's right. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff. I've got ideas. I always have ideas. Um, and and I hope I'll be able to do another album at some point. Do you uh, do you see Pretty Maids doing another album at some point as well? Or no, I mean right now Pretty Maids is on a, on a hiatus. I mean we we we've been totally dysfunctional for the last two and a half since I got sick actually. That was some turmoil within the band, bad chemistry. We're not in dialogue with each other too. To be honest, uh, wow. Know? We haven't met since 2019. I've met Kenny and I met some all the other guys actually as well, you know. But basically, chemistry ain't there, so we know no pretty much not with not that I know. Um, but uh, let's see what happens. Never say never, you know. It's not that I'm there's nobody in the band that I hate or anything like that. You know, it's just, right. There's some issues that we have to solve, but I don't want to go into details about that. And but it's got to be sort of sure. within the band, you know. And then let's see if. Uh, We'll be able to do some concerts. Also, it's difficult with my situation uh, because right. everything in my life right now basically is totally unpredictable. Everything the last three years has been totally unpredictable. Then, um, mm-hmm. I got sick, I had cancer, then the corona came. Now we have a fucking war right in our backyard, you know, and right. it's just crazy what's going on, you know. So I think right now things are very, very hard to predict what's going what's gonna to happen. Absolutely. Well, Ronnie, you uh, not only are you making amazing, beautiful music, but you're inspiring people around the world. So I, I got to thank you for that. Well, thank you. I thank you. <laughs> I hope that people can use some of, you know, what I know for a fact from the social media that, as I said, you know, people, I, get, I don't know if I said that to you or the guy I talked to before, but I'm so humbled for all the, 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 the love and sweet messages I had and the encouragement I had from fans. So I'm, I'm really honored if some, and I know some people get something that if I can, you know, inspire other people who are in the same situation as me or in a similar situation, then I'm really, really happy, you know, because uh, I know how it is. Absolutely. Do you, do you think, um, looking back now over, you know, 40 years of Pretty Maids and now these last two um, solo albums for yourself, do you think almost like this, what you're doing now, is more fulfilling than anything you've ever done? Well, this is just, a, it was just an opportunity to, to do what, what I want to do, as I said, you know, uh, um, um, which was kind of different. I mean, some of the stuff on my solo albums, I wouldn't even present to Pretty Mates, you know. I mean, right. It's too, too, it's, it's too, I mean, and I couldn't write these lyrics being in a band. I can write some of these personal and reflecting lyrics because it's about me and because mm-hmm. it, I can't do that. If you write for a band, you somehow can't write that kind of personal songs, you know. It, you got to, you, re, you represent a band. So that, that's that been great for me to, to do this. And now I'll, I'll carry on doing it well, if, whether Pretty Mates is going to, if we're going to do anything in the future, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll carry on doing what I do. Absolutely. Nice. So, nice. so, so I, so have I, am I done? Have I done enough? I don't think you ever have if you're a songwriter, you know, because as I said, I, I keep getting ideas, you know, if it was all going to end tomorrow, you know, I'd say I had a good run. I had a fantastic life, you know, and I, and I, you know, I experienced a lot more and reached much more goals than I ever could have imagined. You know, when I was ten years old, I went to my first sweet concert or whatever it was. You know, I said I, I just dreamed about being up there one day. You know, and uh, when I did it, after all, and and you did it damn good for a long time. Yeah, thank you. I had a good run. I had a good run. Hey, <clears throat> the race isn't over yet, my friend. You got a lot of running to do, so. Keep I'll running, sing. keep writing, keep singing because we I want to hear it. I will promise you. Absolutely. Sorry. So, where's the best place we should send everybody to uh, find out more about you and to hear the music? 
Well, go check it, check it out. On um, you can still get the albums of Frontiers Records. You know what we've done the last eleven years, and Sony Music still release stuff from, from our past and stuff like that. But check out our, our social media and stuff like that. Spotify. You can find everything we've done on Spotify on the streaming services. But uh, I'd rather have you go out and buy an album, and then we also make money because we don't when they play. There it. you go. Spotify, you know? Yeah, it, we we know that whole nightmare of Spotify and everything else. Well, whatever, but it, it's it, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's great for fans because it gives a good asset to to see what the band is all about. And the good thing is that sometimes people say, "Hey, I gotta have that." You know? Right. So, uh, these are different. This is so different times. I was talking to my son for you know a while ago. He's now a, a very good position at Sony Music, or you know, like being a A and I. You know. And, oh wow. Talked about the old days, and, and he hardly knew what a cassette tape was. You know, it's just, <laughs> but it's just so funny how times have changed. You know, and and they do people totally different in the music business today than we used to do like forty years ago, or thirty years ago, or twenty years ago. Right. That's it. You gotta. That you gotta roll with it. That's it. I, I guess you don't even try to explain them an eight track then. I, I, we didn't get to that. <laughs> I'm not a great technical expert, but I remember all that. You know, it was so funny. But, uh, we, I think we did our first demos on eight tracks, you know. So, uh, you know, wow. those, were the days. those were the days. That's awesome. Well, Ronnie, thanks so much. I know you got a full day of interviews ahead of you. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, I think. Again, yeah, hell of an inspiration. God bless you. And uh, much more time and music ahead of you i can say it hope so i hope so thanks a lot man thanks a lot thank man. you take care you too bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.